Hi, uh, my name is Mike. I'm going to tell you a little bit today how we can use the uh, game What Are the Odds to explain the quantum mechanical idea of, of tunneling um, and qualitatively drawing the tunneling portion of our wave functions. So a little bit of background on the game What Are the Odds. It's a game that went pretty viral on our campus this year and what it consists of is um, a group of people playing and they say, what are the odds of doing a certain act? So for example, I would say, what are the odds that I scream, I love college in the atrium? Um, and I may say between one and 10. And so me and whoever's playing with me would count down from three, go three, two, one. And we all say a number between one and 10. And if our numbers match, I have to do the, I have to do the act. So, um, and then a little bit of background about what, what uh, tunneling is. So tunneling is an idea that's specific only to quantum mechanics and um, in physical chemistry. And it's the idea that a quantum particle can enter this forbidden region. Um, and what this region on our graph here shows is um, the particle, when it happens to land in this section, has a greater potential energy than total energy. And this, um, if you're just starting physical chemistry, really uh, doesn't sit well with your, your mind, but it's something you'll have to learn to accept that this is possible in quantum mechanics. Um, and so it's something we need to take into account when drawing our wave function. So just a, a few stipulations to get out of the way here. We need to always remember um, that these here are wave functions, are probability amplitudes, and are not correlated with energy. This here is our energy levels, these horizontal lines, and this line here is our potential energy curve. And the relationship between tunneling and energy and potential energy goes as this. So it's E to the negative B minus E, big E. So what that relationship tells us is as the gap from here to the potential energy curve increases, the probability of us finding a quantum particle in that area decreases. So we need to mirror that with our drawing of the wave function. So um, look, for example, out here. We have a very little probability amplitude, so a very small chance of finding a quantum particle in that area. And this is because there's this very big gap between the potential energy and the actual energy. When over here, this gap is not that big, so we have a pretty significant amount of tunneling. We have a pretty good amount, or a decent probability of um, finding a particle in this area, and this trend continues um, in between. So how can we use this idea of what are the odds to help um, give us a start on this qualitative drawing of our wave functions? So we can look at the harmonic oscillator and um, it's a really good one to start with because it's the intermediate of um, the wave function. So it's kind of the turning point in which there's a, an adequate amount of tunneling, but not, not no tunneling at all, but not really significant deep tunneling. Um, so this would be um, correlated to doing some act, uh, say taking your shirt off. So um, what are the odds that I take my shirt off? So um, it's dependent on where I'm at. So <clears throat> Here in the x direction, what are the odds I take my shirt off in my dorm room? Ah, oh, that's not that scary of a thing to do. I'll, I'll play in the game, I'll say between one and five. So I have a pretty decent chance here of taking my shirt off. Uh, but then we'll get a little more public and say um, in the lounge of our dorm. Um, what are the odds I take my shirt off? Well, I'll say between one and ten, so the, the odds are getting slimmer here. And then we'll say in PCHEM class, what are the odds I take my shirt off? The odds aren't very good. And then out here, um, eventually coming to zero would be, what are the odds I take my shirt off and say, my medical school interview? There's no chance I'm ever going to do that, right? So there's it's essentially a 0% chance, so our quantum, our, our tunneling curve has to approach zero as we get farther out in the x direction. And this is, this is mirrored um, with the symmetrical wave function that uh, the harmonic oscillator is the same same holds true on this side as well. Uh, we'll be back in a second with a couple other model, models and how we can apply this idea um, to the particle in a box model and a few others. 
All right, well, welcome back. Um, we touched on earlier this idea of applying the game, what are the odds to drawing um, the quantum, te quantum tunneling curves on our wave functions. Um, we looked earlier at the harmonic oscillator model, and now I'm going to show you application to another uh, very useful model in physical chemistry, uh, the particle in a box. Um, so as we know about the particle in a box model, for all um, essential purpose purposes for our studies, this area out here is completely forbidden. <clears throat> the particle can, can never leave this box, so um, our potential energy curve is essentially two vertical lines, meaning that as soon as our particle leaves the box, the potential energy goes to infinity. So, what does this mean for quantum tunneling? What this tells us is that there is no tunneling, essentially, for all effective purposes, in the particle in a box model. And this is because as soon as we step outside of this curve, the V goes to infinity. And if it's infinity, it's something we would never do. So applying our what are the odds model, this would be something such as uh, jumping off the top of the bell tower. No matter what the conditions are, um, you know, we talked earlier about where you're at really depends on whether you take your shirt off or for our example, the particle or the harmonic oscillator model, um, where you're at really determines that. This, for all essential purposes, is non-conditional. No matter what, no matter how close you are here, it goes to infinity. So you will not do it. So applying that model, we have no quantum tunneling in the particle in a box model, which is important to remember when drawing um, your wave functions for a particle in a box. Okay, now that we've looked at um, both the harmonic oscillator and the particle in a box, um, we said earlier that the harmonic oscillator was kind of our middle ground, so there was adequate amount of tunneling, um, but not no tunneling at all, not a lot of tunneling. And then we looked at the particle in a box, which essentially has no tunneling. Um, now we're going to look at the V model. So this is a potential energy curve with a slope of 1. So more, uh, a more horizontal slope than the x squared of the particle, or the harmonic oscillator, excuse me. And let's take a look at what this is going to do to our quantum tunneling. Um, so as you can see here, this gap between, that we talked about earlier, between our energy and potential energy doesn't increase nearly as fast as the harmonic oscillator model. So what that tells us is we're going to have a lot higher chance, a lot higher probability of finding a quantum particle in this forbidden, classically forbidden region, um, signifying there's a higher probability for tunneling. And also, we're going to have deeper tunneling, it's called. So we're going to get more tunneling farther out than we would have gotten in a, uh, a model like the harmonic oscillator. Because you can see that this goes up at a steady um, pace versus the exponential form of the harmonic oscillator. Um, so again, going back to our example to help make this a little more concrete of the um, what are the odds game, this would be something like, say, giving a high five, where you take um, giving a high five um, in a very normal situation at a football game, say, really good odds of that happening. And then it just keeps going down um, in the hallway, in class, in professor's office. Um, and eventually, if you go down enough steps, you're eventually going to get to that awkward situation, say, uh, a funeral or an MCAT in, or a medical school interview where you're never going to give a high five. But that's way farther out in this picture uh, than, say, the example of a harmonic oscillator. And that, again, relates back to the difference between potential uh, energy and total energy. Um, so we'll be back one more time just to show you how we can apply these um, principles that we've learned from the V model, the particle in a box model, as well as the harmonic oscillator to a completely uh, different wave function that we don't um, intuitively know. Okay, so now we're back to look at some crazy system that we don't know what it uh, represents but we're going to apply the principles that we learned from the previous models to know how to draw our um, quantum tunneling ends of our wave function. Um, 
So this, as you can see, is an asymmetric wave function. So we're going to have to take each side separately. And let's take the principles we learned earlier and using the idea of one of the odds to help sculpt um, these two ends of our wave functions. So on this end, we can see we have a, 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 steeper, um, a steeper slope, which means it's going to be more comparable to um, har harmonic oscillator particle and box. And this side, um, we get a leveling off, um, a, a more gentle slope, which is going to be more like the V model that we looked at. Uh, and that's going to affect our quantum tunneling. And so we have, to, we have to always revert back to this big idea um, of the difference between potential energy and total energy and how that relates to our model. So if you look on this side right away, um, we're going to, the difference between the potential energy and the total energy increases at a pretty rapid rate. So that's going to be doing, uh, again, some sort of what are the odds situation, kind of like uh, the take me off your shirt model particle and box. So it's going to escalate fairly quickly, and our odds of doing it are going to go down at a rather rapid rate. So t our tunneling is going to go to um, zero, not, not too far out this way, but we are going to have noticeable tunneling. Definitely not uh, similar to particle in a box um, where, where there's no tunneling. Because there definitely is, uh, it's not an infinite number here. Now if we move over to the other side, um, we can take a look how this one, um, the difference between the total energy and the potential energy, um, really doesn't increase at that rapid of a rate. Um, and especially because of this leveling effect, it, uh, it, we're really going to get deep tunneling. So it's going to be something that um, isn't really socially unacceptable um, no matter how far out you go. So I don't know what a great example of this would be because most things um, in the what are the odds game have some limit, but um, say an uh, awkward handshake with a neighbor, something that you would do um, not that strange of an odd, say this is in a bar where you maybe take a bet and you're feeling willing with your friends, um, you're not that worried about awkwardly shaking the neighbor's hand, but even in the situation of, say, the awkward situations we said earlier, like the funeral or the medical school interview, if you awkwardly shook someone's hand, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, so this really has deep tunneling going a long ways out here because of the leveling of this potential energy well, um, which is an important concept to learn. Um, so now we've seen um, how we can apply this idea of what are the odds to qualitatively drawing quantum tunneling in wave functions, and we've seen how it works in three main models and how we can apply those pr principles learned to any, any wave function that we're given, which is a very important um, tool to have in our toolkit in physical chemistry.